This program is brought to you by Emory University. I've just published a book on the first war between China and the West. And it was a war that happened in the 1600s. Uh, and the book is called Lost Colony, the untold story of China's first great victory over the West. Uh, one of the fun things about writing the book was getting to know the main Chinese character, a guy named Koxinga, or he's known in China as Zheng Chenggong. He's just this fascinating guy. He is part Japanese. He was born in Japan, raised as a samurai. So there, there's a picture of him in a Korean uh, museum where he's like wielding a samurai sword. And then he came to China where his father had become tremendously wealthy, but his father hadn't always been wealthy. He'd started out as a pirate. So he's, you've got this samurai kid whose father is a pirate, who probably speaks Japanese, who becomes a great Chinese military leader. Another fun thing was learning about uh, the Chinese military. Uh, and so he raised this huge army. They wore samurai masks, so it has part samurai, part Chinese, uh, and became one of the great warlords of China in a very chaotic time. And at a certain point, he decided he wanted to go attack the Dutch East India Company in Taiwan. And the Dutch East India Company, and in those days, I mean, very famous, the paragons of capitalism, one of the great colonial powers in, in the 17th century. Well, he defeated them. So how? And that's, that's another one of the big questions of, of the book is really what, was, what kind of military balance was there between China and the West in the 17th century? Was China already uh, lagging behind the West or was the West already sort of surging as many people have argued? Well, what I found was that militarily, at least in terms of technology, the Chinese technology, Chinese discipline, Chinese leadership was all fairly superior to the Dutch. Their cannons certainly were at least as good as the Dutch cannons. And so one of the things that, that this book does that, that was really exciting and fun to do is look at all the perspectives. So I use Chinese sources and European sources, Dutch, you know, French, etc., all the European sources, to look at this history not from any particular perspective, uh, but to see really how both sides viewed each other in, in as much of an objective way as possible. This war is extremely famous. Koxinga himself is extremely famous in, in China and uh, in Japan as well, where he was born. Um, and this year, 2012, is the 350th anniversary of this war. People are celebrating this in China. And I had hoped that this book would also raise awareness of this important event for Western readers as well. So I tried to make it accessible, I tried to make it fun. There's a lot of colorful details, um, and Koxing is just a great character. There's other great characters too. Uh, and I hope that people will read it and find an entry into this fascinating history. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.